Hey Judy fam, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing well. If you're just seeing my face for the first time, hi, my name is Jojo and this is Jojo Reals. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're doing great. I hope you're good. If you are a returning subscriber, hi, welcome to the channel. I hope you're great. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, like the video, and leave me a comment in the comment section. Okay, so I'm about to react to um 10 top 10 places to visit in Poland in case I'm going to Poland. <laughs> so yeah, let's do that. What's up guys? My name is Ryan and I want to show you some of my favorite places in the enchanting country of Poland. So here is my Polish top 10. Poland is home to some of the world's most stunning landscapes this from the really medieval beautiful. old town of Gdansk to the oh towering goodness, Tatra Mountains, that. Poland has so much to offer. Let's start this video off at the impressive city of Krakow. Now this may be one of my favorite cities in all of Poland. Located in the southern part of the country, Krakow was founded all the way back in the 7th century, so you best believe it's full of beautiful history and architecture. Now one of the most impressive sites is the Wawel Royal Castle. It was built during the 14th century and was the first UNESCO World Heritage Site. It Wait, did he say 14th century? Let's take it back. One of the most impressive sites is the, and it was built during the 14th. I heard the right thing, 14th century, and it's still standing strong. Features architectural styles wow. from the medieval, renaissance, and baroque periods. Now from the castle, century. you can make this short 10 minute walk to the main square. This dates all the way back to the 13th century, and it was the largest medieval town it swears in all of Europe, which is pretty crazy. Wow. I and mean, it's just fascinating to think of all the history that took place here. Now in the corner of the square is the St. Mary's Basilica, which was built back in the 14th century, and it's a perfect example of Polish Gothic architecture. Another interesting feature of Krakow is the Kosciuszko Mound. It's an artificial hill that was modeled after other prehistoric mounds in the city. It was built in 1820 to commemorate the national hero named Tadeusz Kosciuszko. Wait, wait, did he say artificial hill? Artificial hill? Why does it look so real? It looks so real. The mount is 112 feet high and there's a serpentine path that takes you to the top to enjoy the panoramic views of Krakow and the Vistula River. Krakow is just such an amazing city and I hope you all can visit. After Krakow, we're going to head to the Tatra Mountains. Now located about a two hours mm -hmm. drive from Krakow, the Tatras are a stunning mountain range that straddles the Polish and Slovakian border. Better. Now the best town to access the Tatras is Zakopane, now located right at the base of the mountains. Zakopane is a perfect starting place for your mountain adventures. During the winter time, Zakopane really is an crazy. ideal place to go skiing, and in the summer months, it's a prime place to start your hike into the mountains. One of the most impressive spots in the Tatras is the Morski Oko Lake. You can make the 16 kilometer round trip trek to the scenic lake. I mean, just such a phenomenal view up there. An interesting fact is that the Tatras are the mm -hmm. smallest alpine mountain range in all Europe oh and are home to plenty of wildlife view. such as the Eurasian brown view. bear. Oh my I just god. And the grass. The mountains. So pretty. It's look, I'm sure they, they, they will be using this, this place for movies because I don't know, it looks like I've seen this place before in movies. love how the Tatras look. They have such a unique and jagged look to them and I just want to go hiking them this <laughs> summer. Now if you're into World War II history, you. you can visit the <laughs> Memorial of Auschwitz concentration camps. This is located about an hour's drive from Krakow. Now Auschwitz is infamously known to be one of the most horrific Nazi concentration camps. Over 1.1 million people died here. One of my favorite books I've ever read is called The Auschwitz oh Escape goodness. and it tells the story of how two prisoners made their daring escape from this concentration camp. Now after, we're gonna head to the northern part of Poland to visit Sopot. Now located right on the Baltic Sea, Sopot was established in the 8th century and grew 8th as century. a commercial trading post and fishing village. 
Over the centuries, Sopot faced adversity as it was abandoned, burned, and then rebuilt. But in the early 19th century, Sopot started to gain popularity thanks to its spa and public baths, and it quickly became a holiday resort town. Today, Sopot is a thriving tourist attraction, where there you can take a walk on Europe's longest wooden pier, or you can enjoy the swans and endless sandy coastline. Now I understand why it's called the Polish Riviera. Now after Sopot, we're going to head over to the neighboring Gdansk. Located just a 15 minutes drive from Sopot, Gdansk I love, is one- I love, I love, I love this view. This view I'm seeing right here with this orange and white, orange roof, white um, building, some brown. I love it. I love it. Like. It's giving a sex vibe. So pretty. I'm just imagining waking up in the morning and then the sun is rising, coming to your room like, girl, oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Fascinating history with periods of Polish, ah. Prussian, and German rule. <laughs> The earliest mention of Gdansk was in the year 997 AD, and during the Middle Ages, Gdansk grew as an important seaport and shipbuilding town. It rose to be one of the wealthiest and largest cities in Poland until Warsaw's rapid growth in the 18th century. Today, Gdansk is one of Poland's most beautiful cities. I mean, I just can't believe it's old town. It's full of these perfectly placed houses that seem to go on forever. Another really cool feature that I like about Gdansk is how the canal runs right along the old town. It's often full of ships and it gives the city such a fun vibe. While you're there, you can just explore the streets of Old Town or take a walk along the canal. I mean, just such an incredible city. Now, just an hour's drive from Gdansk I is the Malbork Castle, is. and this is the know. largest Something castle in the world by land area, which it's is given. pretty crazy. It was built in the 13th century by the Teutonic Knights, who were German Catholic Crusaders. And as the number of the knights grew, so did the castle, which encloses an area of 52 acres. I mean, it's just crazy to think that people were able to build such buildings back then. Mm -hmm. More than half of Malbork Castle was destroyed during World War II, but thankfully it was rebuilt to its former glory. Now after Malbork, we're going to head over to the Missourian Lake District, located in northeastern Poland on the border of Kaliningrad. This lake district is one of the most visited lake districts in all of Central Europe, and it's home to over 2,000 lakes. It's a perfect place to go sailing, fishing, or just swim in the lake. I mean, I just can't think of a better place to go on a hot summer day. Now aside from the lakes, the area is full of beautiful forests, perfect for hiking and exploring. The Masurian Lake District is definitely a hidden gem that deserves a visit. Another scenic place for nature lovers is the Pianine National Park. Now located in both southern Poland and northern Slovakia, Pianine is one of the oldest and smallest national parks in all of Poland. I mean, I just think it's such a beautiful area. The river it's runs so right through it and it acts as a natural border between Poland and Slovakia. The national park is home to many animal species such as the Eurasian lynx, which I think is like one of the coolest animals ever. One of my favorite mm. features of the park is the Three Crowns. Oh the rock feature is made up of five sharp limestone peaks that create quite the sight. Now another beautiful nearby spot is the Nieditsa Castle. This 14th century castle is located just a few minutes away from the park. I mean this whole oh area God, is just incredible. So now after, we're going to head over to the beautiful city of Wrocław. I mean it's such a tricky pronunciation. Now located in western Poland, about a three hours drive from Krakow, Wrocław is such a charming historical Rothschild. place. It's home to one of the most Rothschild. beautiful market squares in all of Europe. It's lined with elegant townhouses and cobblestone streets. Wrocław also has one of the most beautiful cathedrals Rothschild. in Poland. It was originally built in 1272, but has been damaged and rebuilt several times throughout the centuries. I just love its double spires. Wrocław is just the perfect place to just walk around and explore for a day. Now for our final destination, we're going to head Warsaw. to Warsaw. Located on the Vistula River in East Central Poland, Warsaw is the capital. Oh, oh, Warsaw is the capital of Poland. Oh, Warsaw, I didn't know Warsaw, right? The Warsaw. largest city in the country. Okay. Warsaw began to grow in the Learn 16th everything. century when the capital Learn was moved there. there. It was called the Paris of the North, but sadly, oh Warsaw goodness. was damaged extensively during World War II, with over 85% of its buildings in ruins. Thankfully, today it's a bustling mm -hmm. capital with a population of 1.8 million. One of my favorite buildings of the city is the Palace of Culture and Science. At 778 feet tall, it's the fifth tallest building in the EU. 
The crowning feature of the city is Warsaw's Old Town. It was established during the 13th century and is full of history and medieval architecture. Like the main part of the city, mm. the Old Town was almost completely destroyed during World War II, but it was miraculously restored and was made a real heritage site in 1980. When you're there, you can just explore the square and marvel at all the history that took place in this medieval yeah. old town. Well, that is it for my Poland top 10. Let me know where your favorite place is in Poland in the comments. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Guys. Hold on. Hold that thought. Poland is actually pretty. Poland is a very pretty country. Hmm. I love Warsaw. See, I think my favorite thing so far from this video is the building. Whether they call it Old Town. I don't know. I don't care. I love I love I love the vibe. I love the aesthetic and the aesthetics. I love the color. I love the roofing. Like it's just giving this vibe you get from movies. When you are watching movies on Netflix. Yeah, it is really nice. I love videos like this, even if you've not gone out of you know where you are even if i've not gone out from nigeria i've not been to other country you get to learn things before and before you eventually go there i mean i love it what do you guys think i like to know in the comment section i'll see you guys in my next one bye <laughs>